All right, hello class. Uh, this lesson that we're going to go through today is going to be very short, so I'm sure you'll be excited about that. But it's on the semicolon and the colon. And the reason why we're going through this is so that you can expand your writing repertoire so you can understand when to use semicolons and when to use colons and how to use them appropriately um, and in context. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so before we actually get to the lesson I wanted to give credit to where credit's due and this is a Grammar Bytes lesson uh, from chompchomp.com so giving credit to those people that created this PowerPoint alright so this first slide is on the use of a semicolon so as it states here the first appropriate use of the semicolon is to connect two related sentences and this is what the pattern looks like you have a complete sentence then you have the semicolon plus another complete sentence. So here's an example. My 81-year-old grandmother still rides her Harley motorcycle. Her, to her toy poodle balances in a basket between the handlebars. So instead of just ending the sentence with a period like we would typically do, a semicolon serves as a conjunction in a sort, sort of way combining two sentences into one more complex sentence. So you have your first sentence combined with your semicolon here along with your second sentence. So that's one use of a semicolon. All right, so let's look at another use. You can also team up with a semicolon with a transition to connect two complete sentences that are close in meaning. So again, the pattern looks like this. You have a complete sentence plus a semicolon plus a transition plus a complete sentence. So here's an example. My father does not approve of his mother cruising around town on a Harley motorcycle, semicolon. However, which is your transition word, grandma has never cared what anyone thinks. So, in the second use of a semicolon, what I've done is I combined two complete sentences with a transition word to give me one complex sentence. All right? And what you want to make sure you do is kind of take notes on this because the Google Drive form is going to ask you to create sentences using semicolons based on the examples that you're seeing here. So you want to keep in mind that the first example was two complete sentences using a semicolon. The second one is using two complete sentences with a transition word with a semicolon. All right, here's the third use. You want to use the semicolon to avoid confusion when you have complicated lists of items. The pattern looks like this. You have an item plus a comma plus more information plus a semicolon plus an item, plus a comma, plus more information, plus a semicolon, plus and, plus an item, plus a comma, plus more information. Now I know this seems a bit complicated, but it's actually easy once we look at the example. So on a Harley motorcycle, comma, my grandmother and her poodle have traveled to Anchorage, Alaska, semicolon, San Francisco, California, semicolon, and Tijuana, comma Mexico so basically the semicolon can be used to separate complicated list of items so when you have a city and a state you can use a semicolon to separate the next set of cities and states so that's an example alright so here's a, a bunch of reminders or three things to keep in mind when using a semicolon the two main clauses that the semicolon joins should be closely related to meaning. Don't capitalize the word that follows the semicolon unless that word is a proper noun, one that is always capitalized. And lastly, limit your use of semicolons. You should not scatter them wantonly throughout your writing. Semicolons are like glasses of champagne. Save them from special occasions. So you don't want to overdo your use of semicolons. All right. So this was done through um, the online writing lab from Purdue. So we're going to look at um, the colon. 
All right, so after a complete statement in order to introduce one or more directly related ideas, such as a series of directions, a list or a quotation or other comment illustrating, for example, or explaining the statement, for example, the strategies of corporatist industrial unionism have proven ineffective, colon, compromises and concessions have left labor in a weakened position in the new flexible economy. So here we're using a colon because we're introducing a, a set of related ideas. So in this case, in this sentence where it says the strategies of corporate corporatist industrial unionism have proven effective, I'm giving examples that are following that. So this is where you would use a colon. All right. And it can also, as the above statement says, it can be used in a series of directions, a list or a quotation. All right. So let's look at another one. It can also be used to introduce a list. The daily newspaper contains four sections, colon, news, sports, entertainment, and classified ads. And it can also be used, as we already know, between the hours and minutes. So you have a colon there, pretty simple and straightforward. It often can be used between chapters and verses and biblical references. He always liked to refer to Genesis chapter one, verse 18, when starting a speech. Space once between a colon and the next word, when the colon is used between the words, do not space between numerals and a colon when a colon is used to mark time or ratio. So essentially it's, it's cautioning, you, cautioning you to look at the space between the colon and the next set of words. And you want to make sure you follow those guidelines when using colons. And that pretty much completes this presentation um, on semicolons and colons. Told you it was going to be short and pretty much to the point. So what you're going to do now is you're going to apply those particular um, case scenarios that we looked at in the semicolons and colons and apply those to examples in uh, the Google form. All right. Until next time, have a good evening.